Hi, my name is Rennie Richmond, and you're watching Expedition One TV. Today, we're going to be installing a Trail Series rear bumper for Jeep Wrangler JK. Before we get started, let's make sure that we have everything we need for the install. So here we have the coupling, urethane bushings, hardware, L brackets, isolator bushings or bump stops, tire mount, bearings large and small, spacers, door mount, grease seal, and the hub cover. So for the initial install, you actually need a set of standard and metric socket sets and wrenches. You'll also need an inch and a half socket for the spindle. Now the carrier here is held on by eight 13 millimeter bolts. Make sure that when you take them out that you keep them because we'll use them later in the install. The bumper here is held on by two bolts in the wheel well and two bolts, one here and one here by the exhaust. Make sure you check the exhaust is not hot to avoid getting burned. Uh, also make sure that you keep the bolts from the wheel well because we're going to be using them later as well. Now in order to take off this carrier, we're not going to snip this wire here. We're actually going to open the door, take off this panel here, just like that, and we're going to unhook the wire and we're going to feed it through the hole in the door. Now we're ready to install the bumper. But before we install the bumper, we need to install these L brackets. There's actually one on each side of the rear frame, and it just goes in here like this, just like that. Now the bumper itself weighs about 80 pounds and can be really awkward to handle by yourself, so we recommend having a friend help you. So once you have the bumper on, you want to leave the bolts loose so that we can make adjustments later. Next, we're going to install the carrier, but first we're going to put on the rear door mounting plates and the isolator bushings. Now we may have to adjust the plate just a little bit while we're installing it, so we recommend using masking tape on the door to prevent the door from getting scratched. Now we're out of masking tape, but luckily we have a film crew here, so we're going to use gaffer's tape. So before we put the carrier on, we need to set the depth to the tire mount. So we're going to put the tire mount in here, like that, grab the carrier, like that, and then we'll set the depth with a marker. Just like that. So we've already pre-greased the bearings in the hub, so the carrier is ready to put on the spindle. But first we're going to put the bottom bearing in the hub and then put on the grease seal. Just like that. So we're going to take this and just drop it on. We're going to take the bearing, go around like that. 
When tightening the carrier spindle, you want the bolt to be snug, but you don't want to over-tighten. Cranking down on the bolt can cause excess damage on the bearings. Wrench. And still going. Perfect. So now we're going to install the cap. <laughs> Next we're going to install the coupling. Use the provided bushings and the grease with the coupling. Now the coupling is actually designed to be adjustable to the exact amount of tension we'd like for the carrier and the weight of the tire and any accessories you're using. Then use these aluminum spacers as shims on the carrier side. Now the position of the spacers and the door mount is gonna depend on whether or not you have a one inch body lift. To make sure the tire fits on snug, we're going to put the tire mount on the carrier right past this line that we made. Just like that. In order to align the carrier, you want both bump stops contacting the carrier evenly. Once you have the tire carrier swinging with the door properly and everything's tensioned and working well, make sure your bolts are tight and you are ready to go.